Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo. We are here every single Thursday at 11.30 a.m. We're chatting with Gig Performer users. We are sharing tips and tricks, and we are so happy to have you with us. If you are just popping in today, uh, you are on the stream live right now. Let us know if you are using software to manage your set list. Are you a band helper user? Are you using some other software? Perhaps you're just using Gig Performer and that manages your set list. Go ahead and let us know that in the comments. But a special welcome, of course, to Eric, who is popping in uh, every week. A massive contributor to our online community. Thank you so much for being here. Glenn, every week. Happy to see you, friend. Thank you so much for being in the stream. Mark from the UK. Welcome. Happy to see you. So friends, today we have a special guest joining us that I'm really excited about. Uh, I am excited most of the time about most of our special guests because we have just fantastic uh, community users and people are doing really amazing things. I'm humbled to chat with people who have taken the software to really functional, practical, useful um, places every single week. Um, so we will have Ray Myers coming on in just a bit. Um, he is from the band Jackson Crossing. Um, and he is using Gig Performer for a lot of songs, uh, over a hundred. He can correct me on that number if I got it wrong, but um, he's using it. Their set lists are very loosey goosey. He's found some awesome workarounds for uh, being able to access a massively large library very quickly. Um, so we're going to chat about that. Michael, Mankisi uses band helper. So we've got another band helper user. But hey, I want to share with you guys something really exciting, which is that Gig Performer has been shortlisted for KVR's uh, awards. And what KVR is doing is they have actually created a uh, category, I guess, for best live performance software. So on the screen right now, I have KVR's website, and you'll see up here at the top, there's this vote for KVR's uh, Choice Awards, and you can scroll down and choose uh, your favorite things for each category. So um, Discu Gig Performer did make the shortlist for Favorite Live Performance Software, so if you scroll down, you will see Favorite Live Performance Software, and you can vote for us. Thank you so much to our users who have helped us make the shortlist. If you have not yet voted, but you're using Gig Performer to power your live performance setups, you want to help us uh, be recognized on KVR, this is an awesome way to spread the word. Um, help us get it out there that Gig Performer is here, that it is insanely effective, that it really is the best tool you can be using to perform music live. So your vote means a lot to us. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to vote. Um, and if you have already voted for us, let us know that as well in the comments. We'd love to know um, if you're watching. Um, Michael also manages MIDI program changes uh, with Band Helper. So we're definitely going to talk about that today with Ray because believe it or not, our special guest today wrote the article on it. <laughs> so if you're familiar with the Gig Performer blog and you've read it, um, then you will know some of Ray's work already. Uh, welcome, Jacob. Jacob finally downloaded the free trial this morning and is absolutely in love. Gig Performer is extremely user-friendly. I've never seen anything like it. Jacob, we're so happy that you are digging Gig Performer. Um, make sure you join the community if you haven't already. Um, and I'm sure you're going to learn some awesome tips and tricks today from Ray. All right, we are going to bring Ray on, um, and we're just going to jump into everything he's doing. So welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer, Ray. Hello, How's it going? hello. Hey, it's going great. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for being with us, Ray. I, I really appreciate you uh, giving your time and, and popping on and showing your stuff. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, man. So for those who are watching right now who maybe don't know who you are and what you do, can you give us your life summary in about four to six minutes? <laughs> sure. When I was born, I was very, very young. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, so uh, uh, I have loved music all my life. Whenever I was about uh, five, my mom forced me into piano lessons. Yes. And I got it. I, I learned quick. I uh, just seemed to have a natural talent for it. And then when I turned about 12, I decided I was way too cool to play the piano. Sure. So I quit. Sure. And then whenever I turned 16, I learned this amazing secret. 
girls like guys who play the piano. <laughs> and my interest in music was renewed. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then at about 18 or 20, I learned another really cool thing, and that is people will pay good money for a piano player. Yeah. Uh, so at the college I was attending, I put my name is I'm old. OK, so I uh, put my name on one of those little, you know, tear, your, tear the phone number off things in yep. the music department and people would call and I played weddings and faculty receptions and churches and uh, you know, just had a, had a had a whole lot of fun. Then got married, had kids, <laughs> built a career and, you know, music kind of dropped way down for a long time. Yeah. Uh, something that I did just occasionally and I really missed it. Then kids graduate, they go to college. I've got a little bit of free time and I decided I want to be in a rock band. Yes, exactly. Yes. And it's like, I listen to, it's like, you know, the stuff that I play on piano is so much more complicated. Well, sometimes mm -hmm. very, when you're a soloist, there's just a whole lot going on. And a lot of the music and rock music, it's like, Hey, beep, 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 or, you know, simple arpeggio, simple chords. It's like, yeah, I know I can do that. Even though I've never played synthesizers, never played with a band. I got to put a plug in for, so you, it's a little bit of a conundrum. Mm -hmm. uh, bands want people who have experience. Yep. And the only way to get experience is to be in a band. That's right. Yeah. So my plug that I'd like to put in is School of Rock. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love School of Rock. I went there okay. for a couple of years, and they throw you in the deep end. Uh, yeah. They they like to advertise as they're appropriate for all skill levels and all mm -hmm. ages, nine to ninety nine, I think. Yeah. And I mean, within minutes, I go in. And the, the, the guy says, he says, "Can you play a C major seven? Yeah. Uh, I can do a D augment. Yeah. And he's and two or three other chords. He's like, okay, follow me. I'm like, what? And he says, just follow me. We walk into a room, not kidding. Guitarist, two guitarists, drummer, singer, a couple of music teachers around there and an empty keyboard. He says, he says, those three chords are in the song that we're about to play. Go see what you can do. <laughs> I love wow. it. That, I mean, seriously, it's like, you know, best swing lessons thrown in with the deep end. Mm -hmm. uh, big fan of bandmix.com. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's a, a, it's a dating service. It's a matchmaker service for musicians and bands. Yeah. And so I put my resume out there, got a couple of auditions with a couple of bands and they were flaky fly by night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of them better, some, some of them better, some of the others. And then I, and then the good folks from Jackson Crossing found me mm -hmm. and I can't say enough good about these people. Decades mm -hmm. of perfor live performance experience, every single one of them, they kind of mm -hmm. took me under their wing and I said, hey, what I lack in experience, I'll try to make up in really hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, great. Here's our 100 song set list. Go. Yeah. And then the pandemic started. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't realize that was the timing of it all. Yeah. So this is, so this is all you know, two years ago. Um, okay. Okay. So, so you so had some time. I had, I had some time. Exactly. And yeah. To, to, to go in, I did everything on hardware. I had a, a couple of different hardware keyboards. Got everything in. It's all running. It's looking great. Uh, we're, we're ready to roll. But I realized I'm painting myself into a corner here. Mm -hmm. um, someday, that hardware is only going to be available from antique stores. That's right. And everything I've, all this investment in time is proprietary. You can't move it anywhere. So I said, yeah. if only there was a piece of software out there that would do all of this and, and being new to the industry i didn't even know the questions to ask right so you know i played with a lot of dawes and it's like yeah i get it those work in the studio that do work on the stage um somebody introduced me to main stage and so mm -hmm. i migrated everything to main stage and you did everything to me everything so yeah all, all I, of those songs yeah just for context <laughs> that was over 100 songs mm-hmm completely migrated into main stage right out of which Juno in a lot of ways is also quite proprietary Oh yes, that's that's uh, that's where I really started getting into it. It's like uh, the you know a few of the custom sounds I did in ES2, thinking mm -hmm. it was a VST. Now it's it's proprietary; only works in main stage. Yep. Um, and you know, wasn't wasn't a huge fan. I'm, I've never been a Mac user. That's all been learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. um, but what, then, uh, did you uh, move to Mac exclusively for main stage? Only for main stage. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. know that I realized that about your story, right? <laughs> so, but you forgot to mention that you are, you're a software developer. Is that right? The, my day job is in software. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's why you're on windows. Yeah. Um, we're, I work with, uh, with Microsoft SQL server a lot. I don't think that even runs on a Mac. So, okay. Well, there um, you go. Okay. So you moved, you moved and this is where, and I guess this is, I'm a bit, bit preaching to the choir here, but like, the price to value comparison 
really starts to become a thing because main stage, first of all, is not backwards compatible. Right. So that becomes an issue. If you're not a main stage user and you're trying to get it, you can only get the latest version. Mm -hmm. So if your OS is outdated or whatever, Gig Performer is backwards compatible. So if you're running Gig Performer on an old machine, you don't need to update your operating system to get Gig Performer to work. Also, Gig Performer is more expensive than MainStage, but if you're a Windows user wanting to use MainStage, MainStage is a lot more expensive. Right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a massive investment. Exactly. Go go buy a, you know, $3,000 <laughs> laptop day 1. Yeah. <laughs> right. Plus the $30 for the software. Um, but it's it's just, you know, price to value and then Gig Performer by design, of course, is meant to be you know, movable, right? Anything mm -hmm. you put into Gig Performer, you can take out of Gig Performer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of interrupted you there, but I, I've, I, that's so fascinating to me. You just, you moved to Mac because of MainStage. Yes. You moved a hundred songs into MainStage. And mm -hmm. then what happened? Uh, MainStage is, uh, what's a nice word for flaky and unreliable? Uh, <laughs> we'll, it's, we'll find I, one later. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was actually, uh, I found a really great MainStage consultant. Okay. Uh, you know, spent a couple of hours with him to, and he just, uh, he's, he's like, okay, never upgrade your operating system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> never switch computers. Mm -hmm. uh, never, uh, uh, I'm just a big long list of, you know, cross your fingers, cross your eyes, hold your breath really tight and it might not blow up in your face. Okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so he was, so and people, he was, people he was, use this on stage, you know? Yeah. Well, I guess if you are really like not updating your operating system, not connecting your computer to the internet, really testing it, I guess. But then it's sort of like your computer becomes a piece of hardware. Mm -hmm. it, anyway, so he yeah. gave you a long so, yeah. list. So yeah, big, big long list of don'ts. Yeah. Uh, because if you do any of these things, even slightly wrong, main stage will punish you. Uh, yeah. probably while you're on stage in front of a gigantic audience. Sure. <laughs> and sure. uh, we, we were sharing earlier, I've had a couple of, you know, kind of nasty main stage problems. Fortunately, most of those happen in rehearsal. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was always a little bit of, okay, you know, is, is, is today going to be the day? Is it, is this day that's going to blow up in my face? Um, and, you know, so then I come across a gig performer and just you know the, the 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 website says you know it's it's not flashy like main stage i love that this mm -hmm. is hardcore software mm -hmm. uh this isn't some you know little 30 dollar piece of fluff mm -hmm. um it, it designed by software people who are musicians right and you can just tell uh i was talking with our bass player a couple of days ago when you're explaining you know how how it all works you know and and you know how logical and rational and organized mm -hmm. uh gig performer is and how mm -hmm. kind of you know upside down and backward main stage felt it's like mm -hmm. really you do it like that mm -hmm. channel strips and these teeny tiny little buttons to get into stuff mm -hmm. and Gig yeah. Performer, you got all this room to spread out and and think through and you know, it's a little bit of a mind switch to get there but Mm -hmm. You know, as that's learning curve on any new software, uh, right? It's very intuitive after that, and I still think I've only scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there's so sure. much more to learn in there. So, sure, yeah, it's it's fascinating. I, I've you know, I've thought about this a lot, and there's an article too on um on the blog about it. But it's you know, it, the so live performance software wasn't always a thing, obviously, as you know, and you know, DAWs came first. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, people trying to figure out, well, how do I do DAWs during a concert? Uh -huh. And the answer was starting with DAWs, which was also the problem. You know, and, and the yeah. solution, in my opinion, is starting from what was already happening on stage, which was pedal boards, amplifiers, like... Uh, and even if you go further back, right? Like, you know, trumpet players have mutes and mm -hmm. string players have different bowing techniques. And it's, it's sort of like what's what's worked on stage before computers is still what's working on stage now. It's just it's in the computer instead of not in mm -hmm. the computer, um, which is super fascinating. So your move to gig performer seems to me like it was twofold. It was you were looking for something that was a little bit more future proof. And you were looking for something that was very, very stable. Yes. And go ahead. Yeah, the 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 the, the, sta the stable was easy. The future proof, man. You know, I, I 
main stage felt like it was a good future proof, but you're kind of locked into that little walled garden. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of a couple of sounds that I designed inside the ES2 were mm -hmm. the hardest things to get over into Gig Performer. And it's mm -hmm. like I don't don't want to start over. You know, it's like that was that was a lot of tuning. Um, mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. Fortunately, there's a good article out on uh, the Gig Perform Gig Performer community using um, Sample Robot yes. uh, to move sounds. And it worked like a charm <laughs> and, uh, and, and migrated those, you know, last few, you know, stubborn sounds that, you know, weren't already split off into, into mm -hmm. wave files or AIFF files or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever format those are samples are stored in. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. And you know, the other thing too, just to kind of contextualize like this concept of future proofing, like to some extent, nothing is completely proofed, right? True. It's just having things formatted in a particular way makes them more flexible than other ways. You know, like yes. probably like a sample is going to be the most movable, mm -hmm. right? You know, but then like a synthesizer, you know, may stop being produced or may, you know, not work on your windows but will work on your mac or vice versa mm -hmm. um so it, it's kind of like you're you're trying to do your best to be intentional um with where you're storing your information yes i don't want to get you know locked into uh you know I've used the, the the metaphor of painting yourself into a corner a number of times and yeah. that's that's the software developer in me everything mm -hmm. we design in software it's like how's the world going to change? Yeah. Uh, and right. how are we going to maximize the investment that we've spent in writing this? And um, yeah, just bring that approach with me to music. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, ha hadn't found it until now. I, I, mm -hmm. I think I'm there. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope I never have to do another migration like this. Cause it, you know, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell us a bit about what that process was? Sure, absolutely. And then, I mean, if you let me know if you need the screen, I'll bring it up for you. But tell uh, us what the process was and how you had to do it. Well, you know what's funny is uh, my my band is very big on uh, band on band helper. So yes. many words. Yes. And it's it's baked into everything that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, was that before you joined? That was before I joined. Like I say, they've been around forever. So they they had some really good strong processes everything okay. is everything is color coded every band member has a color all their equipment has tape of that color uh the lead singer of every song your colors there mm -hmm. uh if if something's coming out we're doing an arrangement and it's like okay you you sing this part they sing that part when the lyrics come down they're color coded it's like blue wow. means i sing it uh, <laughs> and um and so i mean it's it's it is the it's the um it's the, the authority, it's the Bible, it's the mm -hmm. system of record for everything mm -hmm. with our band. So it's very, very entrenched. It would be, you know, mm -hmm. quite difficult to, to, to pull ourselves out of it. And it's, it's, it's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has a great user community too. I know a couple of people have been, have been saying that they use it and I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm really curious, you know, uh, I'd like, I'd love to compare approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, so the very first thing, you know, okay, here's this gig performer thing mm -hmm. and I download it. It's like, if I can't make it work with band helper, mm -hmm. it's out. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so that's where I discovered the community yeah. <laughs> and, and, and some, some really, really wonderful people and a couple of folks who had tried and got it almost there and mm -hmm. published, but, you know, kind of got stuck or stalled out or something like that. And I said, like, what we need is an end to end process that's, you know, at least, at least reliable at one time. Yeah. And I said, if I'm able to do this, then I will publish an article. I told David yeah. that. And yep. he's, he's like, great. I absolutely love you to do that. Mm -hmm, and it's like, mm -hmm. because I don't want anybody else to have to go through this. Uh, Cause mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it, it wasn't easy. The, the terminology doesn't match perfectly. Between uh, band helper and gig performer. But again, yeah. Uh, gotcha. It's, it's, it's close. Mm -hmm. And you know, just, you know, silly things like uh, the, the, the order of, of program change messages and band helper is different from the, the, the three digits that are in gig performer. They're just, they're, they're laid out in a different order. And made that mistake for a long time. And I'm a newbie to all of this, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of hacking my way through. But mm -hmm. I said, you know, my proof of concept is, you know, if I can get, you know, a three song set list 
software we do call it the rule of threes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You do something once, do it twice, do it three times, make it where you can do it an infinite number of times for the same mm -hmm. amount of effort. Mm -hmm. I can get a three song set list where I can touch it in band helper and it loads in gig performer. Then we're good to go. Yep. Uh, yep. And then after that, it was, all right, let's fill out placeholders for, you know, a hundred ish songs. I think there's 114 in the list. We yeah. add some and take some away. So it hovers around there all the time. Sure. Um, <clears throat> program change numbers are permanent, I assume. Like if you add or remove it, it, a song, you don't change the P the PCs. That that's correct. In our okay. case, it is, and that's a that's a little bit of a problem with band uh, with a uh, gig performer. Not a horrible one. Uh, if you export a uh, if you export a, a rack a rack space, uh, then it loses its program change numbers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so my rule is okay until that gets turned into a, a feature or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't export, I, I export racks, but I don't import them back in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means one gig file with 114 rack spaces in it. Yep. Um, and because that's, yeah, you know, that's the only way to keep from losing the linkage between these two programs mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. is to keep them there all the time. And then, you know, a predictive loading. I, I have, uh, honestly, I have a love hate relationship with it. I understand why it's there and I absolutely love well, it for the, what it was designed for. <laughs> you have a, a fantastic approach to all of this. I guess we're going a bit, um, <laughs> a bit, uh, out of order here, but you, so you're, you had sort of a qualm about load times. I did. Yeah. So do you want and, to share with us how you open gig performer? What's your yeah, strategy for opening yeah, that? So, gig? <laughs> it's, uh, um, so unless predictive loading is on, it takes four and a half minutes for the whole gig to load. But if predictive loading is on and I'm switching songs in a random order, then it goes slow between the songs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, if anybody's, you know, listening for that, you know, that the hit the not so subtle feature request in this, uh, and the, an easier way to turn it off or turn it on, uh, I keep an empty gig around. And I've got gig performer set up so that it does not load the previous gig. It just launches with that big, you know, dialogue. What do you want to do box? Mm -hmm. I load the empty gig. I turn on predictive loading. Mm -hmm. Then I load my 114 song gig mm -hmm. and then I turn off predictive loading. Mm -hmm. Then I start mm -hmm. performing and mm -hmm. every, it takes, you know, one and a half minutes mm -hmm. instead of four and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And then zero seconds between songs instead of five or 10, mm -hmm. depending on how, far away the next song was in the list and, mm -hmm. and how many instruments are in it and you know a cover band we're, we're we're covering stuff mostly from the 80s a lot of synthesizers uh mm -hmm. imagine a lot of people can relate it's like oh what do you play in this song well i play uh the, the flute the trombone the string orchestra <laughs> and the little beepy synthesizer sounds so, yeah know? yes we actually have a question coming in with from phil i actually think i may know the answer but why don't you answer this one? Yeah, sure. What does uh, uh, what does Band Helper do that Gig Performer doesn't do? First of all, all of the other people in the band are using it. That's probably would, the that's most primary, important one. right? <laughs> yeah, that one's that one's up there. Uh, there, there is a lot of overlap. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is a set list management tool, but uh, one thing is it will preserve the uh, the MIDI program changes whenever you mm -hmm. move a song from one set to another. It still keeps them there. If you move from one gig to another, you lose it. Mm -hmm. um, the it, it integrates with uh chord pro which is nice mm -hmm. um it which runs on performer an, does do it's just that it doesn't true. yep it doesn't share with the singer right and this uh uh, uh uh sorry runs on it runs on an ipad runs on an iphone uh band helper does yep. and uh gig performer i've actually played with a little bit just screen mirroring to put it up onto an an ipad but uh you know it's it's yeah, it's 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 functional, but mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like the touchscreen interface on it and everything. But you know the way I run well, the way I run the rig in the in in a concert. So all these songs, I you know I've 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 read a few you know nice snooty people. It's like hey if you can't do it from memory you don't really know it. And I'm going mm -hmm. well yeah I agree with that. But at the same time if I haven't played it in six months and we're playing it tonight, uh, it's 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 nice to have cheat notes. Yeah, uh, and I am not, you know, a proud person whenever it comes to that. I have no problem well, with that. People want to hear the music, and they're not that concerned with how it's getting out there, right? Yeah, and, that's and yeah, yeah. That's that's a yeah. The audience doesn't care. Some some musicians might have that attitude. That's okay. Right. You know, I understand and respect it. But uh, so uh, uh, yeah, every uh, why, don't, why don't we share a screen up here? That, that yeah. may be an easier way to answer the question. What is and the then, big performer right, do? Just for clarity, Band Helper doesn't host plugins. 
Band it helper does not. Tool. So no. it's it's really kind of this is the tool that you're using to manage. To it manage used to be called tool. Setlist Maker. Yeah. <laughs> if that tells you anything about its pedigree, it was called Setlist Maker for a number of years. Yep. Uh, and then it switched over to to, to Band Helper. Yep. Uh, and this is this is what Band Helper looks like. I've got it loading. There's a. I just learned yesterday. There's a native Mac OS app version of Band Helper as well. I was wondering how am I gonna, you know run this on the iPad and, and make it do this when I'm talking to Brett. Yeah. Uh, so this is an upcoming show. Uh, we're playing a show called <laughs> Fresh Fate. <laughs> and uh, on the 15th, this is our last show. Uh, we did, we pl- performed on both the 7th and the 8th. So we use the same uh, set list on those nights. Uh, and anytime we're doing a new show, anybody in the band can build out the set list. Uh, very often that risk falls to Sue, a fantastic band member. Um She'll, she'll put those together. We've got active songs, all songs. There's smart set lists inside this thing. You go into very, very customizable uh, mm-hmm. layouts, an extremely powerful tool. It's like, what do you need to see when you're on the stage? It's mm. comple- What I see is completely different from what the drummer sees. Mm. The drummer has a giant, you know, here's the tempo, here's the meter, and here's a little note to remember how the song starts. Mm. <laughs> Me, uh, yeah, com- completely different. And mm-hmm. like I say, everybody's everybody's view ends up being different. Uh, so my view, whenever I go in, mention the color coding. Mm-hmm. Purple means Sue sings it. Blue means I sing it. Orange means Buck sings it. You get the idea. Yep. Um, the uh, uh, and you know, cheat notes for every song. Here's mm-hmm. Tommy Two Tones, Jenny. Which, um, by the way, you just clicked on that. And for those of you who oh, are watching yeah. carefully, <laughs> Woo, magic. <laughs> Uh, gig yeah. performer moves with it. Yeah, so here's gig performer, and over here's band helper. Normally, this is running down on a laptop, on a, a, you know, barely visible on the stage. Mm-hmm. And band helper, I actually have you know, the audience can't see it, but it's right behind my keyboard because I'm on one of those uh, 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 monopod stands. Gotcha. So it, it, it's it's discreet, um, and that, I guess that's another thing uh, is that this can be far more discreet on stage than you know a bulky laptop. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Blue's the part I sing. Yep. Yellow's the part where the uh, where the uh, where quiet where where everybody else echoes back to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like yeah, this this one. Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a new song. We just started it. We just added to the list very recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's not many keys in this one, which is nice. There's a little gliss up to F4, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then it just hangs on Fs and Gs. That's all it does. So yes, not, which you have an interesting a... relationship to F4, don't you? Yeah, I do. I which do. We, should, we should chat about that too. <laughs> So, okay, so you use this. It's sending out your program change messages. Gig performer on the mm-hmm. on the other end, you have set up to respond to band helper. Yes. So you don't have to touch gig performer at all during your show. I gig do not. Performer runs off to the side and just does exactly what you've programmed it to do. Yep. I don't. I never have to think about gig performer, and in that way, it's as. Yeah, it's really close to as solid as, you know, when I was playing just, you know, everything on a Roland Juno. Um, Mm -hmm. And so there's there's that Roland word. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And yeah, damn it. C4 is middle C. (laughs) Right. Okay. And this is actually a great place to kind of start talking about the like way in which you've moved. So you're moving from main stage to gig performer and you you know, you know, a couple of things, right? You know what you need to happen. Like, you know that you need these songs in these ranges with these sounds. You know that you need them to respond to program changes. So there wasn't like a lot of, for you, discovery. You were kind of like, it's got to do... Yeah, I need to know how to do key splits. I need to know how to do song changes. And I need to get, you know, all these samples moved over. uh, With kind of the three big bulk tasks in it, so... Right. So... You, we chatted early in your process, early-ish, I guess, and you were kind of like, how do I make sure that I don't build something, find out I'm building it wrong, and then need to go back and redo it? Right. I don't want to have 100 points of maintenance. Yes. (laughs) So, And just to clarify, just to make sure, like, Band Helper is just dealing with program changes and chord charts. Gig yeah. Performer is hosting all of your sounds. So the That's two correct. softwares do two different things. Yes. But they work together wonderfully. They do. So you already have 
band helper setup. So your journey starts in gig performer. And how does it start, Ray? Yeah. <laughs> tell us what you do. What you tell us what you landed on, I guess. Oh, yeah, well, uh, uh, um, one, of, one of my hobbies that, that turned into very fortunate for me, uh, I'm an amateur storm chaser. Nice. Um, nice. And I chase chase tornadoes. Chase. Don't try this at home. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> but you can check out tornadicexpositions.com. I'm going to put in a plug for okay. them. Okay. <laughs> But so I'm stuck up in uh, Montana and South Dakota back during June of this month. Okay. No internet connection. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I need to learn gig performers. So when I'm at the hotels, I downloaded every single one of your videos, (laughs) all of them, every single one of them. And I watched all of them end to end. So yeah, I kind of know how this goes. Yeah. Uh, The the first time I met you in person, uh, it's like, yeah, I was sick of your voice. Yeah. (laughs) He's still talking. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I, I hear it in my head. It won't go away. So, so you know, before it, this is interesting because before I even had the chance to you know put my fingers on a keyboard, I was forced to listen to all of this. So mm-hmm. lucky me. I don't know if that's the best way for any. But by time it's in, it's like okay, I understand the differences. I think I got an idea for the migration path. I think we can do this. I think it might take months. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, and I really didn't want it to take months because you know active band we're playing we're performing it's like yeah. i don't want to have to add a song to main stage and add it to gig performer yep uh once i got to a certain point you know where i had placeholders in for all of the songs and everything it's like okay at this point i can do the hard cut over yep uh and that was uh, last friday <laughs> <laughs> that was your first gig with gig performer last friday first gig with gig performer did yeah, two nights did in a row go? Oh, it was fantastic. It, it, it just, it's like, I had just so much more confidence mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I'm not always, you know, looking down at the audio interface. Is the red light on again? Is it going to crash? Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. You know, because one little wire jiggled loose. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's the, you know, it's like, you shouldn't have to worry about wires jiggling loose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, first thing I do, and one of the first things I do with gig performance, like, okay, it says it's crash proof. All right, let's How try this. Just choop, unplug and it, yeah. it turns bright red, but it yep. doesn't crash. Yep. It's like you can switch audio interfaces. You can plug it back in. And guess what? It's just going to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, oh. is, that is a nice feature. Also, mm. when you see the red, though, you're kind of like, oh, no, what happened? Um, right. But I mean, it's, you know, we have a saying in, in software, uh, you know, if you're going to fail, fail loudly. Sure. Uh, and and that's that's I mean, you can tell the people who design this No, OK, you're up on a stage. You, you don't need a little tiny dialogue box or worse. Just, you know, do you want to send a crash report to Apple? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. <laughs> you, you want something big and easy to see. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, your audio interface is unplugged. Stupid. Plug yep. it back in. Yep. OK, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, even if it was something more co- complex, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's a kink in the wire or it's broken or somebody's, t- you still know exactly what to do to fix it. Right. Uh, right. As, as compared to, you know, maybe restart the operating system, you know, mm-hmm. t- turn the computer all the way off. It's like, yeah, you don't want to do that in a show. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. When you're like on stage, there is no time for that. Right. Um, yeah. So you, you're trying to crash it. So I actually didn't realize you built out like a, like a placeholder for every song before you started programming. I did. So we met after. <clears throat> yes. And we did. We, we kind of landed on like a template, right? Mm-hmm. That you're starting using. Can you show us through that and explain what yeah, you're doing abs- and why? Absolutely. So um, let's do whatever. Whoops. Let's go back. Hey, I may need a quick tutorial here. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so first, I just discovered this today. It's like, oh, I can completely hide this. How do you get it back? Yeah, there it is. It's nice. That's what I always end up doing as well. Yeah, like, especially during a show good. because I don't need to know the stuff over here on the left-hand side of the screen. That's what Band Helper's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So the process that I went through, this is the one that I bounced off of you. I built out a, a template one and a template many or a mm-hmm. template multi. And my template mm-hmm. multi... And that looked like a lot. There's a lot going on there. Um, <laughs> it looks very fancy. Oh, yeah. So really all it is, though, is eight different MIDI ins, mm-hmm. eight different empty contacts, because lots of times it ends up being contacts. Sometimes yep. I'll switch it into something else. Love easy keys. Love, uh, you know, a few others. But uh, big, you know, a lot, a lot of the Arturia sounds, I'm figuring those all have one really important thing in common. They're probably more future proof than other things are. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some fly by night free plugin may not work next time, you know, Apple comes in and completely re-engineers the chip and crashes every old piece of software. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, 
all of those run into a 16 channel audio mixer and all of those go out to global. So really it's pretty simple. It's just a, it's a, it looks like there's a lot going on here, but there's, there's not a lot. And then the audio mixer is already pre-wired up in the panel to uh, a whole bunch of faders. Yep. And I, you know, I settled on, okay, I've got, I've got eight of them. If I ever need a ninth one, I may have a little bit of a problem, but okay. I've never used more, never used more than six. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, usually four or less, sometimes just one, you know, some songs are great. You're just playing, you know, uh, you know, Rhodes Mark one or something through the whole mm -hmm. thing. Uh, hey, Ray, do you, is it possible for you to turn the volume on your mic down slightly mm -hmm. from the hardware? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, uh, let me just turn it down here on the audio interface. Yeah, How's not a sound? not a whole heck of a lot, just a tiny How's bit. That? Is that better? Can you split the difference? Yeah. <laughs> How's that? Beautiful, beautiful. All right, there we go. Yeah, sorry, projection voice. My wife no, it's says it's good. Well, I'm like, <laughs> I yeah, don't I talk to people. So I talk at them. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, any song that I start, I I copy this, I copy this this uh, this this uh, template, and uh, you know start filling in the instruments. Now, the nice thing is, is all of this talks to my global rack space. Mm -hmm. the global rack space is already wired up so that, you know, the sounds that are coming out of channel one are being reflected down here. I've got transpose up and down buttons because mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a little out of my range. Can we do it in E instead? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and then uh, um, I've got over here, I can change uh, the, the, the voice volume, the key volume and the overall volume right now i'm not doing voice through it yet that's my next big thing to to go in and play with very excited yep. about that played with a little bit last night but yep. uh so yeah the uh, uh that's you know what's the reason that i wanted to meet with you was it's like let's talk through this thing am i is there a plug-in that is there a widget that i need to have on it that i'm going to go oh crap why didn't i put that on there yep. is the stuff that belongs in global in global and the stuff that belongs up in a in an individual rack space is as that you know mm -hmm. is, is everything in the right place because you know if you is this you know if you build out a process that's got a flaw in it and then you repeat it, it's like you know it's like a bad printing press yep uh, and that's I wanted to, I wanted to make sure the masters were good yep uh, or at least you know at least good enough and you know so so far uh, so good the mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the a lot of the sounds that they had in main stage were brought in using their auto sampler. Yes. Um, oh, which, which we actually have a question coming in about that. Okay. So which sampler which, do you use? Was it sample I, uh, robot? Uh, so I used, I used sample robot to, to get the samples in and then I store them in contact. Gotcha. Um, and gotcha. you know, con contact, you know, once I made it through the learning curve on that and the tiny squint worthy buttons, my goodness, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it seems to be, you know, a nice reliable workhorse, but for anything that I had auto sampled through main stage, those are just stored as WAV files down inside your concert file. Right. And they've got a nice naming convention. So I, once I, you know, kind of got some legs underneath me, the process of migrating a, an entire patch from main stage into contact was 10 seconds per patch. Per patch. Yep. Yeah. Because so it was it work. was literally it was literally grab the files, drag them in, tell them to auto map, move on to the next instrument. Yep. <laughs> Which, and that's that's where I felt like I was really running. <laughs> yeah. Which naming convention is key mm -hmm. for that to work. Now that also brings us to another issue you had, which is that you have improperly named middle C. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> or properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you think that middle C is C4. Yes. And there are plenty of musicians who would agree with you. They're also wrong. But what did you deal okay. with? <laughs> How did you handle this? I know you were partially in the in the community. There was like a scriptlet season. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you deal with that? Because that affects your samples as well. Large, yeah. like, largely, that was the issue. It wasn't just yes. like a, a mind shift set. It was like, my samples aren't triggering. Yeah. So first, yeah. let me let me address the bias just a little bit. You, know, okay. you, you said a lot of the work's already done. Yes, it is. I know where the key splits are. They're right. named with a naming convention. I know that the brass section is going from C0 to C2, right. adjusted up two octaves for this song. Right. Uh, in fact, on most of the songs, there you go. This is Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. Yep. The Shakuhuchi flute is C1 to E flat three. 
the brass section is F3 to B flat five, but this all assumes that middle C is C4. Right. And if it's not, there's a problem. So main stage, one of the very first questions that it asks you is, hey, where's your middle C? Mm -hmm. And and how many keys are on your keyboard? It's like, okay, it's 88 and middle C is C4. Yep. Um, and, and from there on out, all just worked. And I'm digging through gig performer going, where's the setting to tell it? Mm -hmm. the correct way to do middle C <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my correct way, not your correct way. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, because that was, that was essentially a deal breaker too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's, it's like, no, <laughs> it would just take way too much work. It's like, I, I know where it is. I know what the notations are. I've got 114 songs that are coded out this way. I don't want to go in and adjust them all down an octave. Yep. Yeah. So the, 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 the way that I ended up doing it, it's a li little bit unconventional, but it's mm -hmm. not too terribly bad. So first yeah. of all, I'm, I'm my, uh, my controller is, a uh, an Arturia key lab 88. Yep. Um, great instrument. Love it. Light, great key handling. Mm -hmm. The, um, and so I told it to adjust itself up one octave. Yep. And then I told Band Helper to adjust itself down one octave. I'm sorry, gig performer, big gig performer down one octave. It is built into a, a, a script. And in fact, Sledgehammer is actually uh, down 13 semitones. Yep. Why? Because I don't want to play it in E. I want to play it in E flat. <laughs> yep. Um, so the result is that it's down one semitone, right? So uh, yes, that's correct. It is down one semitone, which is the way I played it on main stage. Yep. Uh, most of the songs are just going to be you know, down 12. So yep. this one's, and that's 12. a gig script you said that, and it all is. it's doing is automatically setting your global transpose down. That's correct. Okay. And yeah, on, on, on rack change, unless there's a specific rack script, uh, it double checks to make sure and on, and on gig load, it's checks. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's always got to be down 12, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. unless specified otherwise. And yep. now what I play is the same. Uh, mm -hmm. what I sample is the same. All mm -hmm. of the notes match up and there's only two weird things. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, got to make sure that lights turned on on the piano on the on the Arturia that it yep. you know is indeed sending out everything one octave too high, mm -hmm. and that gig performer is indeed pulling everything down one octave. Yep, <laughs> and it's 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 a dumb workaround, but you know I've dealt with dumber. Well, <laughs> it's, it's sort of I like come back to this, or I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but like you had a problem that was multiplied times a hundred and ten. Yeah. And so you needed something to solve the issue. And it almost didn't matter how it got done. It just needed to be replicatable. Like you need mm -hmm. to be able to do it every time and it needed to work. Yes. So you found a solution that, that fixed it. And even though it feels per perhaps slightly obtuse, yeah. it got you the <laughs> result you needed. And now yeah, you that's... can play your shoes without having to redo 110 charts. Yes. Which would be an insane amount of work. It, it, it would indeed yeah the, sure. um, um and so yeah uh it was yeah whenever i came in i knew what the end goal had to look like right. and i think that's a i think that's a little bit different because i'd already done this twice right yeah you know, built right. it out on the juno and then you know built it all out on main stage and it's like yeah this is this is where i want to go make my home yeah. and you know it's it's a big commitment if mm -hmm. you think about it it's like yep. okay this is you know i'm i'm I, you know, I, I envy the people in the, you know, it's like, oh, okay, we've got our, you know, 10 songs. You know? Right. <laughs> we do, we do the same show. I don't envy so them that why much is it like actually, variety, but... <laughs> you, maybe to like help people kind of understand. So like you don't use set lists because you use a set list manager. Correct. But why is it that you need to be able to jump to any song at any time? Like what yeah. about the way your band does things makes that happen? <laughs> so we're, 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 uh, yeah, we're, we're, we are a cover band. We, we, yep. we perform locally. We perform in, you know, small venues, lots of, lots of bars. We perform in big venues from time to time, but you know, our, our bread and butter is, you know, the, the nine to nine to one in the morning set list. Yep. Um, you know, the crowd gets younger and drunker as it goes along, but very mm -hmm. frequently, you know, you'll get somebody to walk up and they'll just say, Hey, can you do this song? It's mm -hmm. a small, intimate, you know, environment. It's awesome if you can. Yeah. Well, what if that song's not in your gig file? Right. What if that song, you know, well, yeah, we did that one a long time ago, but we weren't planning on doing it tonight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, uh, well, lots of times it's like birthdays. We love birthdays because we love to do Don't Fear the Reaper and let the birthday person play the cowbell. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm very much of the opinion that uh, Don't Fear the Reaper is not in this set list, and it is not. Yeah. <laughs> just tell from the colors. So how go do you here. It? Yeah, I'll go out here. I'll hit all songs. Uh -huh. I'll scroll down to the Ds with a mouse. I'm not used to doing that. Don't Fear the Reaper. And how it loads it? over here in, in, uh, in Kick Performer. Yep. So in less than a second, really fast. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, you know, the instant switching, you know, is for you, it seems like it's, you know, of the utmost importance. Well, I mean, if you think about what would be involved if, um, if, if I were using the setlist manager inside Gig Performer and Don't Fear the Reaper's not in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, probably the, the the fastest thing to do would be to you know Alfred up the file and drag it in. Um, You're talking about if the the rack space is yeah if the, yeah if the rack is not in, yeah the the, gotcha. the the rack that talks to that song yeah and uh, you know one of the I went back and forth it's like all right do I do a song based approach or a rack based approach mm -hmm. and my answer came down to if there were a whole lot of songs that shared racks easily. Mm -hmm. then I do uh, a song based approach, mm -hmm. but every, mm -hmm. you know, every, every song seems to be so incredibly different. There are very few that would even be capable of sharing the same rack because so many key splits, uh, you know, so it's like, okay, I'm playing organ and guitar and don't fear the reaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the problem starts to become like, you know, when you need, songs with specific splits because you're really not playing piano right it is a keyboard part which means the sounds coming out of your instruments could be completely arbitrary they could be barking dogs or yep. change machines or people talking um actually or, sh or shakuhuchi the flutes <laughs> shakuhuchi flutes there you go <laughs> Yeah, David, what do you think of that sound? Is it enough? <laughs> it's enough? Do you play that song, David? Should I should I bring you in? <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, what do you what do you think? Does it pass uh, the David test? I, I, I'm a little bit of. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I I get to cheat a little bit because I got all the sounds from Larry Fast. Uh, <laughs> um, Sorry. It's good to know people, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I play in a band that performs Peter Gabriel's early progressive rock with Jerry Murata, who who played the, for those ten years with 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 Peter, mm -hmm. and so uh, I let I got all the samples that I needed from Larry uh, to basically. Uh, and if he didn't have some of the, some of the things, went they he he's quite a sound designer. Uh, there were things that he did. Uh, where they took devices, hardware that was out there, and just used them in bizarre ways. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, he told me, "Well, this is how we did this with a some kind of a clocking thingy." And, <clears throat> and then I could, oh, oh okay, I'll do that with this device or or software. So um, I, we did Sledgehammer once, um, and turn, um, but um, it's not really part of his, you know, the first four albums. Uh, and that's really all we really do. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we, you know, so I have the sound, but don't yeah. use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I found it on a uh, emulator four from Arturia. Uh, well, I'm sorry, emulator two. And it's well, it, yeah, it sounds it, pretty good. <laughs> the game, um, it's a, it's kind of it, it's uh, you know they use the Fairlight um, for all this stuff. They were one of the few users, um, and they they did they did a lot of stuff that but i don't know who played that originally but yeah it's become quite a synonymous everyone knows you hear that you know what's oh, coming. Yeah. oh yep. yeah so yeah and, and 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 it's it's uh, something that you know a lot of uh we've we've had a lot of people who've come to the show it's like i've never heard a cover band do this it's usually going to be a tribute uh that that you know takes takes the time to do a song like that right so um but yeah we we like a lot of variety so <laughs> david while we have you on here um, there is a very specific reason that you chose to handle program changes the way that you did. If I remember correctly, it's because of duplicates. Is that true? Like well, when you're importing remember, things? We, we, we improved that mechanism in, in the 4.5. Yep. At least. We weren't keeping, um, yeah, the, the, there was always a concern I think originally, you know, when we did this, and these are the kind of things you sometimes you don't find out until like, you know, 
thousand people are using it, and then you yep. say, "Oh, wait, we got that one wrong." So yep. it was really yep. based on our own. Um, um, so it used to be when you exported stuff, we didn't save the program files because we didn't know where where would you want and if what happens if you had another file a song in there with that particular program change right um now i think they're hard coded in they're into when you export songs i'm not sure if we do it i don't remember if we do it for rack spaces as well um uh, almost positive you don't i was testing that just a couple of days ago well you know it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, you know submitted as a feature request there's no reason why we couldn't i guess when people use program changes for the most part they're always in in song uh, mode and you're reusing rack spaces so having a program change for you know it doesn't really make as much sense so probably oh oh i think we lost him <laughs> david left well anyway yeah. i just I, I, I understand i understand the motive yeah oh looks like i've also lost ray it's kind of a bit of an interesting thing that's happening here well let's see if there are any questions and if they're coming back welcome back david did you get booted off? Yes. Was that me or you? I don't. I don't know. I'm still here. Ray also got booted off. Well, then it's you because you're the. Welcome comp. back, Ray. I'm back. <laughs> I, I don't like being cut off in the middle of a sentence. No, no one does. I'm like, what's happening? I'm going. Well, I guess I'm going to try and answer some questions here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I assumed it was me because Spectrum goes down all the time around here, and Spectrum went down here yesterday. Don't get me started. Uh, but that's, that's, <laughs> we don't want to divert. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, in terms of program changes, um, the irony is, uh, you know, I don't use, um, program changes because I do everything from an iPad running lemur. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, OSC. Yeah. I'm using OSC, which, mm -hmm. which is, uh, gives you a lot more flexibility. I'll be putting in a feature request to band helper to support OSC. <laughs> and, and like I say, they've been, they've been fantastic, uh, you know, yeah bugs bugs and features and stuff like unbooted <laughs> oh Love it. yeah a guy, guy named arlo runs that company arlo media and uh just very personable i can't say enough good about the product so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but um o osc because it's bi-directional and you can ex you can do a lot of stuff and so widgets can appear and disappear depending where you are I also, my laptop is behind me. I don't touch gig performance during the show. Mm -hmm. I'll do everything either from dials and buttons or literally from the uh, my iPad using uh, uh, Lemur. Yeah, exactly the same. That's like, uh, yeah, whenever somebody first suggested live performance software to me, it's like, you, you expect me to haul a computer onto the stage oh. with me? It's like, the, it was the, terrifying. The, <laughs> the, the inter I, I don't want to, I don't want to, of the thing but you know the interesting thing there is i see so many people comment well yeah well hardware is much more reliable than computers uh and then and uh, me meanwhile of course laptops get thrown around by kids every day at the schools by businessmen mm -hmm. slamming them on the desk and meanwhile people are busy complaining about how often their keyboards fail Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's one of those. It's anecdotal. Uh, you're, well, you're yeah. preaching to the choir now. It took me a little bit to have that conversion experience, but I'm in now. So. <laughs> well, here's the scientific perspective: the plural of anecdote is not data. <laughs> you know, just because it happened to you yeah. doesn't mean that's the way it is for the world. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let me not hold you guys up. It's yeah. too interesting. <laughs> So thanks for popping on, David. Ray, what I want to see is, I haven't seen this before. Maybe you can show us. I don't know. Can you show us a song with all of your key splits and kind of demo how you have it set up? Because like you label it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so we'll see it in Band Helper and then we could kind of see how you do it on your keyboard and yep. MIDI and blocks and all that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I've got a good example of that up on the screen right now. Oh, I need you to share do, it back. You have to reshare. Uh, yeah. Please. Hello. Let's you go got back. booted. I got <laughs> booted. We're getting it there. <laughs> And oh, that one and there. Okay. Okay. Here we go. And then you got to add me in. So, so here's, as, let's just stay on sledgehammer. Perfect. It's a, it's a great song. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's this one's one, I can play it in my sleep now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, if we were to take it out of the set list and, you know, bring it back in a year later, I mm -hmm. would have very little trouble recalling, uh, you know, what's, what's going on with it. Cause there's, mm -hmm. There's there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of cheats in here, but again, it's all muscle memory at this point. But so starting with that template that we had, I'm going to move this over a little bit and yep. make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, 
So yeah, everything is little... perfectly labeled, by the way, which that's I love. I in every way. I I. I can't exist without it. That's the software guy in me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've got my MIDI in D sharp two to D sharp three, which plays the Shakuhuchi and goes through uh, a little bit of reverb. Okay. Um, C sharp four to A sharp four adjusted down 12 semitones is my R and R brass riff. That one's a uh, sample taken off of the Juno. Okay. Uh, and then, Oh yeah. I, uh, I octave it out through parts of the range. Okay. Uh, riff, riff low, riff high. This is the same thing, but not adjusted down ah, an octave. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right? I've seen some other approaches to doing that. Um, this one is simple. <laughs> sure. Um, the uh, uh, are the know. samples the same in, in uh, low and high? They are. Okay. Right. So you could just run both one, the second MIDI in block to the first one and trigger the octaves that way. Yes, I could. You're but you're doing this and it's working. So you don't No, have no, no. Honestly, I think I, I'm, I'm going to go play with that because it just makes it a little bit simpler. Because mm -hmm. I mean, well, this is a copy, so I can do yep. that and that. Boom. And it should be right. the same. Right. Allegedly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess well, it would be the same. Yeah. Well, this, this, is, this is my backstage version, so there I can do go. anything I want to with it. So uh, safe. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, then you got... there is a little bit of a difference on this one. There's a, uh, there's, there's, there's a, there's a change to it. And, um, I, oh, i needed to be able to control the volume separately. So these two guys are the same. This gotcha. needs to be, this needs to punch out and be a little bit louder, uh, mm. because this is that bum, bum, those big chords in it. Yep. Not the da, 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 da. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's this part over here. Yep. And, and then there's, there's a little organ sound. In, da, da. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just on my mini here. Nope. Go up another octave. Yeah, that little sound. Okay. Uh is, is coming out through here. So Yep. And and then yeah, all that goes into the mixer. And here's here's a cool thing that my sound guy loves. Um I was telling you about this just before. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done two shows with gig performers so far. Yeah. And I just handed him a printed copy of the set list. That's something yep. also nice that Band Helper does uh, yep. for your, for the old school people. And so I gave him a printed copy and I said, just put up arrows and down arrows. If you're having to adjust the volume during the show, let's, let's make your job a little bit easier because the nice thing is, is you tell me the, you know, the shakuhuchi is too loud. I can take it down a notch mm -hmm. and we'll see what it's like for the next show. Um, and that's all, you know, mapped hardware on the keyboard. So again, I never have to look at gig performer during a show. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice little toggle there for E flat or D. So <laughs> So, so you, you leave yourself sort of notes in band helper and then the keyboard itself is what splits things apart and then you're, yep. you're good to go. Yep. So when you handle adjusting volumes, are you always doing it from the gain and balance or are you sometimes doing it from within the VST? Uh, it, if it needs to be a little bit louder. Uh, then I will adjust that down inside the VST. A mm -hmm. nice, a nice thing that I just noticed about contact after, you know, migrating, 200 samples into it is they all started uh like negative six db mm, yep, uh, yep. <laughs> yep. is that why can't i get this any louder oh yep. look at that there's three different places to adjust the volume just inside contact cool right, <laughs> right. right. Uh, and so yeah I've, most of those are now you know stabilized out so you know my my uh you know note to self is if i ever find this yeah that, that yeah that right. I don't have enough headroom. It needs to be adjusted down inside the VST. Yeah. Um, and whenever after a show I go through, it's like, oh yeah, I did turn that up a lot. Let's go see if we can make it punch through a little bit better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Kevin, who was actually with us last week, wants to know that when you're splitting ranges with MIDI inbox, does the CPU load stay negligible? It does. I've uh, never seen CPU go high, except uh, it seems to spike a little bit during a song change. Uh, is about it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're at, we're hanging out here at eight ten percent. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's it's hard really to, low. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to crash it. <laughs> it's really low. Uh huh. Um. Okay. And this is my older. This is actually my backup computer. Uh, it's oh, wow. got sixteen gigs of RAM on it. The new one's got sixty four. Um. And that, that came from user, user group again. So he's like, you're doing that many. You probably want more Ram. And yeah, yeah I can, I can get Ram up into the, you know, 80, 90% on this computer. I use uh, uh, clean my Mac and it'll mm -hmm. pop up. It's like, Hey, your Ram usage is getting high. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it'll just, you know, it'll blow away a little. And then you go into activity monitors, like what's, what's eating up all the RAM? Mm -hmm. Kick performer yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Of course it is. And, and honestly, you know, working in software, that's what you want it to do. Right. You, you, you want it to take advantage of all of the RAM that's there. And it just gives you, you know, fluidity. It lets you move around a lot more easily. You just mm -hmm. don't want to, you don't want to go, you, you can't go above. <laughs> and, right. Right. We actually have a question coming in from someone. I don't know who this is because uh, it's Facebook makes it weird. Can you speak to Bluetooth versus wired for connecting iPad to laptop running gig performer? I tried and failed on both solutions. Oh, wow. So, your article. so yeah, tell yeah, me check, what you do. do. Do check out the article because it, uh, it does cover Bluetooth. That was the way I was doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. I've now sworn off of Bluetooth. Okay. Uh, I've learned an, an interesting feature of Mac computers. Okay. Uh, once they hit a certain temperature, mm -hmm. they go into a, a uh, even even if you tell the battery, you know, the, I've, I've read all the articles on, you know, tell the battery, never turn off, always, always give it all you got. Mm -hmm. um, it starts shutting down processes. Mm. And here in Texas, we, we started a show, an outdoor show. And at the beginning of the show, I believe it was 109 degrees. Oh, wow. Um, unfortunately, it only goes down from there. But yeah, we learned a lot about, you know, how how equipment behaves. And, and Bluetooth gets really flaky in those high temperatures. Interesting. So now I run everything, everything hardwired. Um, and I've got a, uh, uh, it's, it's a wire that goes out of the iPad, goes down into a little splitter, everything with Apple's dongles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, one of, uh, one of the, one of the outs just goes into the computer and the other ones to supply power to the, to the iPad. That's it. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to do, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. No, uh, if it's, if it's, if it's very hot, uh, it, it, it can get messy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And then uh, Glenn is asking what your processor is, but I feel like you maybe just said that. Did I miss it? Uh, or... Let me, I, I don't know. Let's take a peek here uh, on this one. 16 gigs. Like I say, this is the backup. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Apple M1. There you go. Uh, okay. Which, Great. which, which was, you know, very problematic in, <laughs> believe it or not, in main stage. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Uh, but, you know, never, never even blinked over here in Gig Performer. Mm -hmm. But if it mm -hmm. runs on Windows, of course, it's going to run on an M1. So, yeah. Um, so if anybody has any other questions for Ray, uh, let's pop those in the comments right now. Um, Ray, I do have a final question for you. But before I ask you that, I want to give people time to submit their stuff. Can you tell us where we can find you and how we can see you playing live? Oh, absolutely. If you're in the Dallas area, uh, the band's called Jackson Crossing. Our website is jacksoncrossingdallas.com. Mm -hmm. um, the, the easiest way to stay up to date with us, we have a, a email and text news uh, text announcements anytime there's a show. Unsubscribe anytime you like. We never send any spam. It only We only let you know, hey, we're, we're playing here next Friday. Mm -hmm. So we got a couple of upcoming shows. We're, we're playing in Fate, Texas this weekend. It's actually one of my favorite places to play. It's uh, it's it is an outdoor venue. It is extremely family friendly. Picnic tra picnic tables, really nice stage playground. They have uh, uh, you know gourmet pizzas and sushi. It's like a it's like a high end food court, but it's a grocery store. Oh, and then and then the venue on the side of it. I think they're starting to call it the porch, which just sounds a little bit cooler. But <laughs> uh, such such a fun place to play. The audience is always very interactive. It's you'll have a crowd of you know maybe a hundred people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our very next show after that, we're uh, doing a charity event. This is Women in Need um, <clears throat> charity that that helps abused women. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a day long family event in Rockwall, Texas. Mm -hmm. That's got a glow run and family activities, and it wraps up with a fun concert from Jackson Crossing. So, yeah. And then there's more. Uh, yeah, there's <laughs> quite the a few more. And the, the website is great. There's this kind of fun QR code here. Um, Ray, you're uh, you're on the user forums as well. Yes, is that yes, true? I am. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, if you want to connect with Ray there, you can certainly um, yeah. Do I'm Tico that. Rico Ray there, so and had to have a username, so that's my gamer tag, Tico yeah. Rico Ray. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got some more questions coming in, so let's uh, let's have you answer them. Have you tried 
timed start recording of your sets via gig performer yet? Timed. Do you know what he's talking about? Uh, timed like, start recordings. Like oh, like, can, like like a practice track or so, or a, or a backing track or something no, like that. You or, can oh. record gig mm -hmm. performers' outputs starting at a specific time using the record feature. I have not yet. Uh, so I, I guess I've only, I've only like I say I've only feel like I've scratched the surface. I've gone yeah. deep into the areas I need to go deep into, but there's so much breadth out there. So yeah um so that is a feature we have some videos on it so if you're interested in it check out the youtube channel we we do cover it um glenn has a question do you use gig manager which i assume is actually rig, rig manager, manager. <laughs> would love to see a more detailed step-by-step -step video for use of the rig manager i believe we have two um so check those out but maybe we need another one that's more to the point do you use Rig Manager, Ray? I do. I do use Rig Manager, even though uh, you know the the real strength is you know multiple controllers, mm -hmm. uh, and I really only have two. Okay. Uh, I got my KeyLab eighty eight and my and my Mini Lab that I use just when I'm sitting here at the desk and it's like you know tweaking sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't want to stand over at the big one or load the big one onto the desk. Yep. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so and and those two are you know so similar. They're both Arturia, mm -hmm. but. Um, uh, so I haven't had a huge use case for rig manager, but on mm -hmm. your advice, I went ahead and did it. Yep. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's just going to make the addition of, you know, keyboard number two or, you know, uh, you know, you know, down the line equipment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also too, like, I, I think, so rig manager is super powerful, right? Like it can remap all of your widgets very quickly, switching controllers. And, and so there's like a place for that. And I don't want to discount the power of the rig manager, but yeah. at the simplest level, if you just need this keyboard to go to this MIDI in block, mm -hmm. you can do that with one or two clicks. Like just very simply, this keyboard is now this keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, and that on its own is worth the mileage. Yeah. Um, Originally, I didn't see the the, the, the need to do it. Mm -hmm. um it's like i've got one piece i have one rig <laughs> and right. i don't have multiple rigs to manage yes uh but that future proofing thing again mm -hmm. yeah it's like yeah you, you you do the upfront in here and then you got an alias for everything and then you just yeah. sign the aliases and you're good to go so it, it's the equivalent of labeling your midi in blocks but for your hardware it's like yeah. you're, you're, you're letting <laughs> gig performer know what it's actually doing so that it can trans Scribe, transpose, trans move. I don't know what the word yeah. would be for you later. All right, here's another question. And I don't know. Uh -huh. so yes, I, I have. You have spent some time <laughs> in XMLs, but David I have. Really said no. should, 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 David's got a very big. Should I pull you in, David? Yeah. <laughs> I know, Ray. Uh, you yeah. have admitted uh, to looking at the XMLs. Dude, oh, dude, of course, I'm, 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 I'm a software guy. <laughs> no, nobody should depend on that XML format. There's absolutely no guarantee that we will always keep it the way it is. We could change it arbitrarily at any time we want. Uh, if you futz with that and do your own transformations with it, uh, basically, it might work. But all bets are off, and we're not going to support you um, if we do an update and we change it. And that's uh, reasonable. That's an unsupported have, feature. Yeah. We, yeah. We do have something that's slightly different, but maybe worth mentioning while you're on here, and maybe there are some other software people. But we're now supporting, um, I don't even know what you call it. Uh, the uh, We've got Z Tones is using it. It's like uh, you can build. Uh, extensions third-party extensions oh, well, that's a whole different, totally uh, different. Yeah, our, our extension library um and there's some amazing extensions starting to get mm -hmm. created but that's a completely different mm -hmm. yes uh, that's for a completely different purpose that's basically for extending functionality yes um so if play, you're... Playing, game, playing games with the xml is completely unsupported and it it can blow up in your face at any time if we change you know we may just change the names of some attributes and we'll do some internal work to make sure that we convert an older gig, but the XML for a new thing will just be different and, mm -hmm. and all, all bets are off. Um, yeah. uh, so you, don't use XMLs, spend your time building an extension for us. Yeah. You know, and, 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 but actually thank you for doing it in XML. You know, everything's in binaries in, in main stage 
And I think David, I believe that uh, you also use uh, GitHub to do to, to back up your your gigs as well. Uh, well somebody I does. <laughs> uh, the, the the SDK for extensions is open sourced. Okay. Uh, and uh, somebody else, um, a couple of other people who are part of the community, and they're awesome what they've done. And they basically took over it and they put it out there so that people can build extensions using that SDK. And it's got the instructions for how to do it under Mac and under Windows, how to build stuff. Um, and that's a completely independent mm -hmm. thing. You know, we're hoping we'd like to, that thing should get used to build, you know, extensions for some of the hardware devices out there that mm -hmm. we have no time to do. And, you mm -hmm. know, if somebody wants to like jump in and, you know, build an extension to support a, you know, a fancy mixer or a, or, or a, or a Mackie controller or something, that's yeah. the way to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's the XML, which represents the internal format. Uh, that can change at any minute, and yep. uh, so yep. don't, don't. I would there. think any. I would think anybody that you know had the the the, the chops to look at XML would 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 know that. Well, <laughs> no better. I, yeah, I, but who knows? You know. Well, one one would hope, but to be honest, I've been bitten by that myself. There's some other products I've used in the past, and said, "Oh, look, they did this XML. Let me tweak this." And you get mm -hmm. an update; it doesn't work anymore because they changed it. And mm -hmm. sure, you know, um, you can go in and change again. But, you know, imagine downloading a new version just before a show and then up you get. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. Mm -hmm. not, don't do, you, you know, you're, you're, you're basically all bets are off. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, David, do you save versioned files of your gig files using Git? Or is that in uh, Time Machine? No, I use Time Machine because okay. uh, the, 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 Git is awesome for source control. I, 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 it's phenomenal how, how, how well that thing works. But um, until we get around to doing our own versioning, because, you know, we've thought often about, you know, we'll do automatic backups every now and then of your thing to save previous versions. It's on our list along with a thousand other features. I found sure. one, Ray, now that you mentioned that, you, are, you know, yeah. uh, so I don't, you know, um, but the reality is, if you're running Time Machine, which I'm always running on my laptops and studio machines, or, and they, by the way, it's never gotten in the way of performing. I don't run it when I'm actually at a live show, but it's never gotten in my way. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do that, it's automatically doing versioning backup. So I can just go there and say, oh, give me the gig file from yesterday, um, or give me the gig file from 7 o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. I don't have to remember, because Time Machine's doing it automatically. If I do it with Git, i got to do it myself. Yeah, um, my my process my process on that is anytime anytime I work it takes seconds it's loaded up here. Uh, I mean, I can see here's here's where I created the backstage. Here's where I put in "Fight for Your Right to Party." This was before rehearsal, after rehearsal, uh, testing with the new Omega computer. DDIO is "Don't Dream It's Over." Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait what, which which program are you using? This is this is a uh, 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 GitHub desktop. Are you using GitHub? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I did. Mm. I use something called Fork, which we discovered a while ago. Uh, it's made by some third party, but it, um, we've grown to love it. It's not free. Yeah. It's forty nine dollars, and it's brilliant. So, yeah. Let me say here on "Don't Dream It's Over." It went away, I can put it but back. I can, Hold on. Yeah. Uh, the thing sure. that the thing that I like about this one, I was already familiar with it. I use it sure. in a job, uh, but the other one is, uh, you know, okay, I, I changed an NKI file, uh, I imported four new wave files, sure. and I updated the the gig. Yeah, sure, it's 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 very granular. Uh, sure, and, you have to remember to do it yourself. That's uh, true, but and, it takes seconds. And, <laughs> and the reality is, and I think it's very important not to forget this gig performer. I know we have. Quite a few people who are technical, but gig performers intended to be used by people who want to be musicians, not techies. Yes. In fact, including me, when I'm in music mode, I do not want to have to say, "Oh, damn, how do I do this?" and go back into techie mode. That was one of the problems I've had with other products that shall not be named. Um, <laughs> amongst other things, I always had to jump out of being in music mode to like deal with an issue. Yeah, uh, the nice uh, thing this 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 is you know. Five seconds at the end of the day, and if I forget mm -hmm. it, it's yes, not a big but deal. If you're not a software person, you don't know about. Things. Oh, I agree. Yeah, uh, this is this is only really good for you know people that are used to how source control yeah. works. So for the for the average user who just needs to have a backup of everything they did time on a Mac time machine, and there are, uh, there are similar programs uh, for Windows. I'm not as familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but that's that's the easy way to do this mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah um all right so ray final question for you um if somebody was brand new to using gig performer never used it before what is one piece of advice that you would give to that person to get started on the right foot i know i know <laughs> It's yeah. So, you know, what's interesting is, uh, uh, and you and I discussed this, it's like, yeah. there, there are, there are so many different kinds of musicians out there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if, if, um, you know, you're, if you're playing for a church and you need mm -hmm. a piano and a pad and an organ mm -hmm. and that's it, mm -hmm. the approach is going to be completely different. Yep. Um, the, you know, honestly, the, uh, uh, here's, here's the one piece of advice, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, cause I, nay, I really do have it now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, the joke that's true in all software development, RTFM, read mm -hmm. the fantastic <laughs> manual. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 I mean, seriously, uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot going on there and I, you know, I had the, the luxury of kind of being forced into it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anything else to do. So yeah, I read the manual cover to cover. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now I've got an overview. I know what the mm -hmm. landscape is like, and I know the mm -hmm. parts that I need to pay attention to and the parts that I can you know, mm -hmm. just ignore. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that's my approach. Uh, uh, an equally valid approach that I think would work really well for a lot of people. Get in and hack. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Play with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of people aren't. Is you know, so I'm I'm, a, I'm in music mode right now. That's great. Let's go hack. I'm in software mode right now. Okay, great. Let's mm -hmm. read the manual. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yep. I don't think I would have made it this far this fast. You know, 114 songs in you know a couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't have a good deep knowledge of the features of the program that I knew were absolutely essential. And again, I know I've only scratched the surface. There's so much stuff in there that I really want to dig into. Uh, you know, I want to get into vocal processing. I want to learn more GP script. Mm -hmm. um, and cause man, the, the stuff you can do with this. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also you were mentioning manual, definitely special uh, shout out to Nemanja who does, first of all, a fantastic job with basically everything that he touches his hands to, but he's responsible for uh, the user manual. 99% um, of everything that's on the blog he has written or made sure is actually correct. Um, everything is linked together beautifully. And I think you'll find, Ray, you can attest to this, when you read the manual, it's very practical. It it's is. not a bunch of just jargon for the sake of jargon. It's very much like this is what it does. And this is why it matters. Right. Uh, it sounds like, it sounds like musicians wrote it. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, as, as, as compared to the product that shall not be named, Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. which, which documentation says, if you want to save the file, you know, click file, then click save. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. It feels almost like double speak, but uh, yeah. 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 A absolutely. So um, if you're not a major manual fan and you don't want to do it, I do think that it will read more like a blog than a manual and you're going to get the information you need easily. You know, the mm -hmm. other thing I think that's special about our manual as I'm going down this rabbit hole is that the manual, like it's written in order, but it's linked. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can jump you know, around when you need to. Yeah. Yeah. If you're reading a section about widgets and you end up needing to know about something related to widgets, but not totally exact in the same chapter, it will jump you where you need to go. So mm -hmm. you can kind of navigate it either, you know, from like, you know, top down or bottom up approach. I'm looking for yeah. this information or I started here, but what I really need is this and it will kind of link you around. So yeah, anyway. there's a lot of good power user features in there that they're, they're not necessarily intuitive and discoverable like mm -hmm. stereo plugins with the shift key is a great example. Oh, sure, uh, sure. It's like, yeah, you, you, you would have to see somebody do that to realize otherwise you're doing double the work all the time. So, right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, Ray, thank you so much for being with us. Um, this was I awesome. had a great time. <laughs> yeah, I, I did too. Really appreciate you sharing friends who are watching. If you want to check out Ray's uh, band, check out the link in the description. He's playing often. You've got a lot of shows on there. So, if you're in the area, you want to see how he's using Gig Performer, make sure you do. You can also connect with him through uh, the community. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be back next week, 1130, same time. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you, everybody, Thank you. for watching, and we'll see you next time.